What's going on guys, my name is El De Niro and welcome to, why don't you tell us what episode this is? This is episode number three of the Midnight Hour. Yes, yes, welcome. Uh, a lot of people um, were giving me feedback about the show and stuff and a few people said that I should do a live intro. I say a few people, it was literally one guy and I can't even remember his name. I think it was like I hate El De Niro 57 or something. But uh, yeah, shout out to that guy. This is why we're doing a live intro. My guest once again is Jack who, if you don't know who he is, his link will be in the description to his Twitter handle, which is difficult to pronounce, so I'm not even going to attempt it. Uh, he's also got a YouTube channel called Jack's Cuts, where if you want to see him cutting things with a large samurai sword or something, that's what you do, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, that's what you used yeah, to do. Yeah, lots of basic just cutting blue mm. whales and shit like that. Um, yeah. If you don't know who Jack is, he's like this guy who... I actually first met him at WrestleMania, where he was defending his World Heavyweight title... Um, he's about six foot seven, weighs two hundred and sixty pounds, and has a beard that is composed of gold. So that's mm. who Jack is. And um, yeah. we like listening to the feedback. Like we like reading the comments and stuff. And a lot of people in the last episode said that we should talk about conspiracy theories. So I say we should talk about conspiracy theories. Yep. So um, a conspiracy is basically a plan or a plot involving two or more people in which they both agree that they're going to commit a crime at some point. It can be a conspiracy to murder someone, or a conspiracy to even overthrow a government, like some kind of military coup or a revolution. Um, a conspiracy theory is the term given to speculation, I guess, or a belief that a crime has been committed and subsequently covered up. And this term, conspiracy theory, has sort of been hijacked over the last few years to essentially propose an alternative explanation to an unseemly event um mostly nowadays if you google conspiracy theory you'll find that it's applied to acts of terror where a lot of theorists like to use the term false flag um but it's been applied to numerous if not most events throughout pop culture also like for example elvis and bob marley are mm. both alive on an island getting stoned mm -hmm. and sitting on their millions that they somehow earned by faking their own deaths um but yeah, I, I talked about the term false flag. Just to explain what that is, I'll, we'll talk about a well-known false flag operation, mm. which was Operation Northwoods. Um, and this was a proposition that was put forward by the CIA in the 60s. Now, this isn't a theory. This is an absolute thing that happened. Um, uh, JFK was in charge at the time, and he actually rejected this idea that was put forward. And he, it was a CIA plan to commit atrocities throughout America and even the world, including hijackings and bombings. And then they were going to blame Cuba for it because they wanted to go and overthrow Castro because they had this huge fear of communism at the time. Um, I just want to say, if you want to search Operation Northwoods and read about it, you can see all of the details of the plan. It's a pretty comprehensive thing. Uh, they'd planned on starting rumors, sabotaging their own military infrastructure. Mm -hmm. uh, they planned on blaming Cubans for everything. Like, they were going to blow up their own aircraft and warships and staging terrorist attacks. Uh, I think I read largely based around Florida. Um, yeah, Florida, Florida, Miami, and some in Washington itself. I mean, the whole the whole plan was designed to get the U.S. public and the nation behind a pro-war against Cuba, yeah. basically. Yeah. And, and when Kennedy heard about this, he actually changed the shape of the CIA afterwards. And I read that he fired the guy who was in charge of the... Uh, this is bad that I can't remember. It was something like he was the overseer of <laughs> operations, except overseer is probably not a word and that's not his official title. But he was fired and he actually went on to become one of the main guys in NATO afterwards, which I found was pretty interesting. But um, mm. they were so intimidated by Castro, I guess because he came into power after leading a revolution against the previous regime in Cuba, which was a guy <laughs> named Batista. I forget his first name. He was also the world heavyweight champion in wrestling um, and current Royal Rumble winner. <laughs> but uh, no, I read that pre-revolution Cuba, which was in the 50s, before Castro had started this revolution. Uh, Castro's revolution lasted for about seven years, but in the meantime, America had a huge stakeholding in Cuba itself. Uh, the guy who was in before, Batista, he was a dictator, and he used to murder his own people. I can't remember the official numbers, but a lot of people died under his command, and he, I guess, used to subsidize a lot of American activity with state-owned bodies and um, resources and stuff like that. So it would be seen as a huge um, threat, maybe, for the Americans that Castro had 
come in there and mm. taken over. But it's that's a real proposition that was put forward in the sixties. Mm -hmm. um, we did kind of talk about how the sixties were fucking mental, though, for everybody mm. involved. You had Vietnam as well, um, which actually happened under Lyndon Johnson, I believe. Mm. But uh, yeah, so that's a real false flag, and I guess that's the basis for. I guess it's sort of a proof to a lot of people that it can happen and a lot of people mm. like to point fingers at you know things that might seem a little bit strange and then they'll say false flag operation if you google false flag operation example or theory or something you're probably mm. gonna find things related everywhere from you know yeah. the iraq war to probably literally everything that's happened in the world I'd imagine. you really get you really get endless lists of uh, various either terrorist attacks or general uh, misdoings yeah. that are attributed to false flags and people often point to Operation Northwards saying, well, you know, in the 60s, forgetting that, like you mentioned, that Kennedy actually reformed the CIA to stop them from kind of yeah, exactly. bringing these kind of things. And it's one, of, it's one of the leading, or it was one of the leading, and it probably still is actually, things behind things like the Lockerbie bombings and, yeah, exactly. you know, Iran and stuff like that, yeah. or Iraq. Um, I guess I, I sort of want to add a disclaimer here um, and I want to say that I, I guess an anecdote I'll say is one time I was watching the first Zeitgeist movie when I was living with my girlfriend in Scotland my girlfriend at the time and this guy was talking it was like supposedly providing proof that the 7-7 bombings in London were staged and it was this guy um, I forget who he was who who he was even meant to be but he was basically saying that yeah in all likelihood they were staged like these strange things happened and my girlfriend at the time was like that didn't happen why are you watching this shit and i couldn't explain it because at my core i'm a diehard skeptic um mm. and i know like skepticism does work both ways like i guess you could call conspiracy theories uh conspiracy theorists skeptics also because they're skeptical of the official story i'm on the other side of that though i'm always skeptical of conspiracy theorists Mm. Uh, but I'm also really interested in fiction like I used to want to write a book that had a conspiracy in it like a lot of the things that I watch on TV have conspiracy theories and stuff so I just find it interesting but I don't subscribe to mm. the idea most of the time anyway yeah and it's, it's important to remember that what we're, what we're telling you now is a very watered down version of events essentially for what happened for each of these conspiracies or conspiracy theories yeah we um, yeah we want to keep this entertaining and mm. not convoluted because yeah. you know like i mean if you want to do a deep dive on things like we can provide the basis for your search or whatever mm. but we're not going to sit here and talk about all the things that not like semantics yeah exactly yeah the things yeah, that nobody no really cares about so um i suppose uh, the implication are the um, the ramifications of a false flag operation are often put in, like we saw with that Operation Northwoods, a mm -hmm. false flag operation was put in place to attempt to take someone's rights away. Yep. Um, or to, you know, um, what's the word? Uh, expand the dominance or control of a political system. Yeah. Across the world, and that's an unseemly thought, and it's not one that's far from reality you know like there are probably a lot of governments who want more control and dominance and mm. and i mean it's it's more prominent it's more it's a lot prominent it's become a lot prom more prominent recently especially with the tensions in ukraine with north korea um with you know the, with the venezuelan revolutions that are going on at the moment as well the egyptian syrian you know all of these countries that are suddenly in a uh, revolt that have been building for a long time it's not I wouldn't say it's uh, like a likelihood, but it's not a far stretch of the imagination, especially for something like North Korea that could potentially be incredibly dangerous with nuclear weapons. Yeah. Um, for something, uh, a catalyst, you know, even the smallest catalyst to uh, launch some big military operation from the likes of America. Yeah, and, and you see it as well, people usually well not usually right but a lot of conspiracy theorists like to use this idea to sort of warp someone's mind to push an agenda forward um i remember mm. the the school shootings in where was it the adam lanza one um about two years ago was it when he went he went into a school and like basically shot a lot of people and 
Like, within fucking hours, you had crazy lunatics, right-wing nutjobs uh, on the internet saying that it was staged, uh, they were props, they were all actors on some kind of, on some kind of uh, studio, mm. and the reason that they did it was to take away Americans' rights to bear arms, which mm. is just... I don't understand this. I don't. I don't get it. I can't sympathise. Yeah, I mean, like with that. yeah, that was that was the Sandy Hook shootings, wasn't That's it? That's the one. Yes. Yeah, yeah, the prim- the primary school or the elementary school for whichever side of the ocean you're on. Yeah. But that that was a lot. I, I I don't. I'm not, I'm not saying I can understand the scepticism, but the scepticism behind it being, you know, it was a group of toddlers. There were stories of, you know, these these childrens and the teachers' heroics. Yeah. And the bereaved parents of these young children, and you know it was all very set up. It wasn't set up, obviously. I I don't believe that it was set up, but I'm tr- just trying to play devil's advocate as saying that you know it was very conceivable that it was it hit all of these almost you know emotional heartstrings, you know. Yeah, yeah. So that it would rally the um, mm, the, the casual, rally the anti-gun. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. To uh, to take away our guns. Um, yep. But that's an example of a, a conspiracy theory being used to push forward an agenda. Mm. But we also have an example of a conspiracy that actually happened being pushed, mm. f- being used to push forward a huge agenda. And this is Operation Snow White. Yeah, Operation Snow White. I'm going to lead this one in. And um, Operation Snow White, for those of you who don't know, was the internal name uh, in the Church of Scientology for a major, major criminal conspiracy during the 70s uh, to destroy any and all um, kind of documents held by the US government about Scientology that held Scientology and its founder in a negative light. So um, it was it was like the largest infiltration of the US government. I think it was around 5,000 covert agents at one time. That's what it was, yeah. Uh, in US history. Well. Yeah, so that, I mean that's that's an inconce... well, I say inconceivable, but it's especially for, I think it was about 151 uh, U.S. departments were infiltrated in this attempt to destroy any unsavory or unfavorable, that's probably a better word, yeah. unfavorable documentation about Scientology and its uh, founder. Yeah, L. Ron Hubbard. A- anything mm, that yeah. sort of portrayed Scientology as anything other yeah, than a peaceful a religion that is mm-hmm. absolute fact. I, like, I don't know the basis of Scientology. I, I've honestly never really studied it that much. But I have heard that they believe in... Actually, I'm not even going to talk about it because I don't know. And I don't want to offend anybody. So, like, um, I just think that this is fucking crazy. I didn't actually know mm. about this till you said it to me the other day. Uh, just this idea that this cult, essentially... Mm. It, you know, they um, instigated the biggest infiltration of the United States government in the history of the world. And they're a bunch yeah. of Scientologists. Like it, It's... It's it's really important, I think, to note that this happened in this this actually happened. I, I want to reiterate that because it's ridiculous. Mm-hmm. This in, this religion, whose beliefs of their god are shaky at best, mm-hmm. um, <laughs> you know that they they tried to they try. I say they tried. They did. They infiltrated the U.S. government with five thousand members, uh, and that's that's a ridiculous amount. I I studied this when. Now, I will say I went to a Catholic school, so this could be biased hmm. information, and I'll say that straight out. But I did, yeah. I did, I was taught in school, in religion class, that L. Ron Hubbard was on record as saying that the easiest way to make money is to form a religion, because he was an unsuccessful science fiction writer, and he was an unsuccessful, I want to say, screenplay writer. Um, and he tried all of these things, like he tried philosophy, I think he even tried medicine, and he's quoted on record as saying the the easiest way to make money from someone is to form a religion. And mm. I think it's it's not crazy, but it's disconcerting to know that five thousand people um, in their organization decided that the American government had an agenda against them, and they believed this so strongly that they decided to take it into their own hands and completely fuck with America's shit, like, essentially, and, and delete all these... Well, not delete, because I don't even think that's how they did it back then. But, no, I think it was essentially still paper back then, but yeah. Yeah, like wiretapping and just all of these mm. things that, in all seriousness, that puts Scientology forward as a force that I didn't really recognize their strength before, when you consider mm. they did this in the 70s, like, <clears throat> after yeah, I mean, Vietnam and, uh, and all. And, si- and since then, if anything, Scientology has grown and attracted 
It's it's famous now for attracting the rich and the famous. Yeah, and, um, and they have Tom Tom Cruise being one, and I think isn't Will Smith a uh, Scientologist as well, or he's something, he, or he's dono- donated to them. Has he really? He's not a f- yeah, I think so. I haven't heard that. I've... Either that, or I'm reading conspiracy theories as well. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> he's. Uh, I know John Travolta is a Scientologist, and as mm. far as I know, uh, what's her name? Lisa Cartwright, I want to say Nancy Cartwright. Mm. Um, Nancy Cartwright, yeah, the voice of Bart Simpson. The voice of Bart Simpson. She's a Scientologist. Uh, wow, well, I can remember. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Don't have a cow, man. Uh, also, Leah Ramini, who you'll only know this if you watch daytime TV during your sick days in school or college or whatever. She's the wife from King of Queens, Carrie. Um, she's a lovely woman. Like I really like her. It's supposedly, anyways. Well, no, she was a Scientologist for a long time, but I believe she's actually broken free from the church as of late, and she's criticised it publicly, which is something that you don't really want to do because they can fuck your shit up. But I'd say, luckily for her, she's of a high enough profile that people would notice if if she was to go missing. I mean, you don't you don't want to go fucking with a a, a society or a church or anyone that can infiltrate. The U.S. government yeah. at any time. Yeah, they they've done what like North Korea can't even do. You know, <laughs> they they've done things that countries have failed to do, which is just I think that's crazy. Yeah. But um, I like I was reading about this and I just I don't know I wanted it to be a theory because I just didn't want to mm. believe that actually happened. It's, it's it's so ridiculous to believe that they they were so passionate. I mean, I I, I read something like a. It was it was the Crusades of the Church of Scientology, and that, that was some, that was how someone described it. And fucking hell, that was like, oof, that's. I, I don't think that's uh, something that you want to even associate with either. Like, I don't think no. that the murder of anybody who rejects your <laughs> ideology is glamorous enough to, yeah. you know, uh, showcase it in a in a white light, or as it were. But I I know that Germany recognizes Scientology as a cult and not a religion. They they don't recognize it as a religion at all. So if anyone is offended with the way that we're talking about Scientology, let's just pretend that we're German and we see it as nothing more than a cult because it's, uh, it's pretty crazy. I don't think there are any Scientologists subscribed to me anyway. But No, I, I, I doubt it um, somehow. Yeah, it's, it's crazy. And uh, a lot of people went to prison, but also a lot of people didn't go to prison. A lot of people a lot got of people away went- with it. Yeah, a lot of people went to prison for very short amounts of times. Yeah, I read five years um, was the maximum. Yeah, five sentence. years. You know, um, Hubbard's wife and several other high-ranking Scientologists, I don't know what they call themselves, if they're like the KKK and they've got the, the high wizard scientists <laughs> or something. <laughs> yeah, I think that's what it is. Yeah. Um, but And L. Ron Hubbard, after that, he... Um, he he was never. I think they love him enough that they sort of kept him out of it. But he mm. was always indirectly a co-conspirator, and yeah. after what happened, he went into hiding for the rest of his life. Mm. I think he. I think he died in the nineties. I want to say. Yeah, I think so. I mean, to be honest, the the action. Uh, saying that the German the Germans consider Scientology as a cult. It, you know the actions of. Uh, Hubbard and the people around him he's quite like, like you know he's quite cult like oh yeah it is uh, you know they they were they were they were one step away from mass suicide yeah yeah that, yeah <laughs> um, that's a crazy like i i find it you know when people say or like a lot like you know the so there's this sort of hardcore atheist community on twitter and they have this real resentment of anything to do with religion and they put every religion under the guise of a cult under that umbrella of a cult because they're brainwashing people well you know i say brainwashing with yeah. a lot Air of quotes yeah exactly um but i i don't believe that catholicism um what's the word i don't think they they goad people i don't think that they lure people into their like you know realm of scientology or their realm of you know religious enlightenment or whatever it's meant to be i don't think they do that as much as scientology does no. because and i know this because i was raised and subjected to you know like lots of religious sort of um what would be the lots of religious teachings and things as a yeah. child which i rejected myself i've been allowed to reject it and here i am i think i think uh more in recent history if we go back 50 60 odd years um, I, th- I think 
even uh, probably longer than that but religion was based on not uh, wasn't based on that that's really wrong of me to say um religion a lot of uh, some teachings were based on fear mongering almost yeah um you know the f- there is a this is some this is a i wouldn't say it's a strong opinion that i hold because i'm you know open to I'd like to think I'm open to any new suggestions, but yeah. you know that um, religion is, or well, some of it is based on the fear of death and the th- the fear of, you know, the unknown, and it plays on that, and then using things that are that people do a lot, you know, as and putting them as sins and creating this horrible world that is hell. Yeah, I think so. And bring them towards that, you know. I, I think the I think the rise of our global communications and how much more informed about global events and just the universe in general and stuff we are, I think yeah. and, and as well as that I think celebrity worship. I will always put celebrity worship yeah. into this bracket. I think that's why our tendency to lean away from religion has yeah. come about. But I think Scientology and things like that, they like to prey on vulnerable um, and it, like brainwashing is a really strong term. You can't really brainwash someone to the point where you can't brainwash someone without torture. I believe that's a scientific fact. You have to torture someone in order to change their opinion on something or to warp their worldview in a way that would suit and benefit you. But for Scientology, what they do is they find the most vulnerable minds or the minds who are maybe a little bit lost, maybe looking for something a little bit more. And that's how they get them involved in their cult is they, they, um, they, I mean, they use very clever language and things like that, but that's how they get people involved. And it's, it's just a kind of terrifying thought that so many of them just believed in it so strongly that they would commit such a huge crime. Yeah. I mean, that is, that is big. Uh, It's not, you know, it's, they weren't murdering anyone. They weren't putting anyone in physical harm. No. But it's this mass elimination of information. Yeah. Um, you know, good or bad relating to them, but you know, I'd love to see how that would have been treated had it been a country or a terrorist mm. organization from a country or anything like that. Because if if it wasn't, a, you know, a cult or something as kind of for most people a laughable thing like Scientology, I think that's fair to say. Had it been like a serious organization intent on finding out information about the American political system or, you know, government secrets or whatever, I think there would have been death penalties and... There would have been uh, there would have been such a heavy backlash. There would have been a massive reformation of the way that... or the people that were hired in, you know, the American yeah, exactly. government system. Yeah, yeah. The, there would have been a huge change, which actually, mm. funnily enough that would actually lead to another false flag conspiracy theory because people would say that America hired these mercenaries to go in infiltrate oh, their yeah. system so that they could use this launch an attack on yeah so there we've I think we're only like 20 minutes in and we've already gone full circle but yep yeah. uh, well uh, good talk so <laughs> yeah yeah thanks for coming on the show I'm yeah <laughs> But um, I guess moving on from the Operation Snow White, there's a conspiracy theory that is prevalent in pretty much all media at the moment, which is, it's something that I just, it's the NWO, the New World Order, and the theory is that Hulk Hogan, Kevin Nash, and Scott Hall decided to take over the WCW, there's a wrestling joke for anyone. <laughs> now, the, the, uh, the NWO is, is sort of a secret society. Um, usually they're portrayed as being either I, I think I'm right in saying that they're either Jewish or they're Freemasons. Uh, Freemasons, Illuminati. Yeah. You know. And they run the entire world and they control all the money in America and everything that happens is a direct consequence of their command and their bid to remain in power. Um, I guess, typically, this implicates them in pretty much everything that happens. The the plane that went missing in Malaysia recently, probably the NWO have done that. It's probably You can already probably Google that and find, you know, solid <clears throat> evidence that, <laughs> um, that they've done that. But it's funny because you, you can read some pretty compelling information and some pretty captivating information that kind of might hint to the... Uh, existence of the NWO and then you have the casual or maybe the below average intelligence human who watches a Lady Gaga video and believes they found solid evidence that the NWO is you know subliminally contaminating our brain with commands or whatever it's supposed to be yeah I mean the new world all the conspiracy theory has been uh, about and it's been thrown around a lot in 
recent history, especially since, uh, you know, and especially in the last 20 years. I mean, especially, you know, pe people, you know, if anything coincidental will happen, you know, you get people shouting about how it's the Illuminati. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, that, uh, that that's all stems from the New World Order. I remember when David Blaine was on GMTV or something, some morning breakfast show, and he had that eye drawn on his hand, oh, yeah. and he just wasn't talking, and he just showed them the palm of his hand with the eye on it, and there were people going, oh, oh, he's part of the, uh, he's part of the, the Freemasons, the Illuminati, yeah, oh, here we go. You know, I honestly don't know uh, pretty much anything about Freemasonry and what it's supposed to be. I know, I know, I actually surprisingly know very, I say surprisingly, like I'm a Freemason. Um, <laughs> for a Freemason, I know very little about myself. Um, no, um, you know, I've read, um, I, I don't know why this gives me any credence, but um, I've read things like the Da Vinci Code, and I've, I've read a lot, of, well, I say a lot, I've read a fair amount into the Illuminati and New World Order and stuff like that, and they all seem to overlap with the Freemasons, but I've never really looked into... Yeah, you know, I can recognize Freemason imagery. I know what it looks like. I know that they have a distinctive art style that's pretty prevalent in you'll find it in a lot of places in North America as far as I know. They have um they have uh like sculptures and shit. But I know what I know Freemason imagery and all of that. And the only reason I know that is because people keep fucking pointing it out as the existence of the NWO and stuff and it's just I don't understand. Like you said in the last podcast, you quoted somebody. We still don't know who it was because we're lazy and we're very bad at our job. But um, it was this profound quote: "What's more terrifying, the idea that we're alone in the universe, or the idea that we're not?" Yeah. And I would liken that to the people who are pointing at the idea of the NWO existing. I think they're more terrified at the fact that terror can happen to them at any moment, and that it's driven by outside forces, and that it's driven by, uh, you know, anti-American, or it's driven by a misinterpretation of religious documents but it's driven by very real things that real people misinterpret and that real people use to channel their anger or their i i use the word Mis evil misdirected anger yeah I, I mean there are there are like you said the evil there are a lot of evil people in the world and doing truly i mean it's difficult for normal people to think about the truly atrocious things that other human beings can do and it's almost a, a way to disassociate yeah yourself you know yeah. everything happens for, well everything happens for a reason kind of thing you know it's being controlled by a higher means whether that be the freemasons and the illuminati or a, a god yeah I'd say you know I, I think that's exactly what it is it's just this sort of mm, what's the word uh lack of ability to accept that we know what's happening we just would rather live in our own little comfort zone where we don't and I think that's what drives a lot. You know, you know something else that I want to say as well is that mm. I think why a lot of people believe in certain conspiracy theories and why they all have their own little communities on the internet at the moment is because some people are, I guess, they come from this branch of pseudo intellectual um, tendencies where you aren't really concerned with finding any greater truth or any greater meaning be to anything. You're just concerned with being right and appearing as though you're smart to people and for most things like i'll say for example the moon landings there's there's a conspiracy about that which we'll get to in a, in, a, in a minute but the for the for the casual average human of average intelligence who went to a standard school and stuff like that they don't really know what it takes to fly to the moon like they don't understand things mm. like um, you know, even even a concept like solar winds they don't understand how that would work because even though you're taught it in school you use that information to pass a test and then mm -hmm. y your brain swallows it into the abyss yeah. and you shove some other information in there. And for a lot of people who like to put forward their conspiracy theories, I think that they just use this overwhelming vocabulary relating to things like, mm -hmm. for example, solar winds and, and our ability to like NASA. And they just say all these space terminology and stuff with the hope that, most people there aren't going to call them on it because they don't really know how. Mm. And I think that's why a certain amount of conspiracy theorists exist in their little communities on the internet is because they have this perception that they see things that nobody else can. Like, they've taken the blue pill, which I hope is the right pill for this metaphor to work. <laughs> but that's how they think, you know, that they've... they've um, what's the word like they've let go of their fear and they can see things so much clearer than the than the casual person who thinks that barack yeah, yeah. obama rules the world and 
you know, I, I think that's one thing that just gets in the way of a lot of people's ability to rationalize and, and give context to mm. stupid shit like this NWO nonsense. And I yeah. say nonsense because I genuinely believe it's nonsense. Like there is, I don't even think there's anything to suggest that there is a greater force beyond mm. the actions of a president or whatever. Like, yeah, I mean, just look, just looking at the simply at the Wikipedia page. I mean, New World Order isn't isn't it's not it's an overbearing heading for the idea that you've got so many different uh, possibilities. Um, you know for the rule essentially the, the the overall rulers of the earth you know you've got freemasons the illuminati um you've got something called the fourth reich which is you know a government uh, representative of the german third reich but um yeah. i really don't know how to pronounce that i should really stick with one and it's reich. choose one I, reich. I noticed cuz i did german in school i did german but you know i wasn't very good at it um, <laughs> And you know, um, and then you've got you've got things like um, alien invasion and things like that. Yeah. You know, go, which date back to, you know, the idea the idea that you know the alien the, uh, there must have been an inte- more intelligent form of life to build things like the pyramids and the uh, and Stonehenge. Yeah. And things like that simply for the massive physical undergoing that it would have taken to create such monumental structures i find the funniest or the most just ludicrous and easily um disputable evidence of the nwo is is the idea that they are communicating with us subliminally through music videos and things because it's the idea that (laughs) let's say like hypothetically speaking me and you both run the world right and and that's whatever a motive is we don't really know we just rule the world like we don't have to have a motive because we run the fucking planet deal with it bitch but the idea that we subliminally interject into pop culture and you know and infiltrate things like your fucking local radio station or your favorite comedian or whatever and we put this symbolism in there for you to pick up on this is like the world isn't a big fucking leaving cert you know english literature poem where you have to pick up on metaphors in order to find the the truth in it if somebody rules the world i can and and if their goal is secrecy and you not finding out they're not gonna fucking tell lady gaga to put loads of imagery about them in their music videos i just think that that's the craziest thing have you heard about that denver airport stuff no denver airport is this it it's good that you haven't heard about it because there's documentaries on it and you'll watch it and you'll just have wasted your time it's fucking ludicrous and again it comes back to the freemasons so the idea that denver airport was built and it didn't need to be built and uh it's built like it's way bigger than it should be and it's got all these underground things that are definitely going to be used to house the people that are going to be saved when the rapture comes and all this fucking nonsense and there's some art drawn in the in the airport and i will admit it's very odd looking art it's not really like anything you've seen before but there's a lot of odd looking art everywhere in the world yep. like people try different cultural things every now and then there's there's different revolutions that span different time zones for um like what is considered to be good art or modern art or postmodern and, and interpretive and all of these things so these pictures are very odd some of them point to maybe war some of them point to peace some of them point to supposed global domination and things like this and mm. it's just Right, if you genuinely believe this is their aim, is all of this shit to do with Denver Airport, why would they be fucking advertising it and willingly broadcasting it to everybody? You know what I mean? It doesn't... No logical... I just... It doesn't make sense. There's, there's, just, there's, just, there's just no rash, logical rationale behind it. No, there's no I, motive I, I can't makes sense. I can't... There's, there's, there's nothing that I've heard from any New World Order conspiracy theorist or any, any of these theories that can viably get me to go well yeah that's yeah that's something yeah like they just pick, they're picking up on they pick up on loose end metaphors that writers will make uh, you know and looking into paintings is and especially back from the renaissance looking into paintings and looking at the background and thinking oh well that guy's pointing towards you know zion yeah, this this guy's pointing this and this guy's pointing pointing towards the east. Yeah. So that must mean because the sun's over there, but then there's two suns, and that means and it's like maybe that he just wanted to draw two suns. That's and that is what I use to cut up most of these theories is Occam's razor. Sometimes the most logical conclusion is the actual conclusion, yeah. and sometimes there isn't a great mystery surrounding 
and, and like even if you've made it this far in and you're still skeptical about something that I've said or you're still a bit cynical and you go, yeah, but what about Operation Northwoods? Just remember that Operation Northwoods was crushed. It didn't happen. It was it was laughed out of the Oval Office by JFK and subsequently the people who came up with the idea were ousted. And right, fair enough, one of them did go on to be in NATO, which is another thing in itself, but I don't think you can implicate NATO in... Well, actually, I'm not even going to go there because somebody is going to come up with, yeah, but they bombed Libya or something. But it's, yeah, it's all just crazy yeah but I mean one of my one of my favorite things that's a reference to itself in terms of the new world order is part of the uh, the alien invasion tangent or tree branch that is part of their uh, part of the new world order conspiracy yeah. is that the fil- the film men in black is a complete reference back to the fact that aliens have been among us for years yeah um, and that that was one of the big theories I was actually um, um... I was in my friend's house the other day and he is a huge he's fascinated by the paranormal in the exact same capacity that I am doesn't believe in it but just loves reading about it and loves hearing theories and it's not even to laugh at it it's just to get perspective really Mm. but (laughs) they were talking about how uh, I'm sure you've heard the theory about how aliens visited us and left a code in our DNA so they put it across with this notion that in in these types of shows they like to build suspense before they hit you with the punchline or they hit you with the and it was aliens and and it was like we know what five percent of our dna is for and then we have the other 95 percent which used to be called junk dna but now we believe that it has some kind of purpose in our genetics and i was like no way fucking really our dna has some purpose in our genetics (laughs) fuck that's some deep shit that's crazy i don't believe that Ridiculous. Yeah, but I mean, just just saying that you know, aliens aliens came, popped a bit of extra code in our DNA, and fucked off again. Yeah. It's like a kid's been given like a, a science project to do, and they've gone, oh, pop that, uh, pop those seeds in that in that little pot pot of a uh, pot of soil. Yeah. Water it, and then uh, come back in a couple of days. Yeah, and then we'll you give a you a gold star. You have a plant, you get a gold star, and kind of the kid's gone and watered the thing, and everyone's kind of forgotten about it. Yeah. And suddenly there's a tree in the cupboard. Yeah. And the aliens are going to return and just go, oh shit, they've built a civilization. Yeah, would you look at that? Whoops. <laughs> 10 to 15 billion years ago, remember when we came here? <laughs> this, uh, but um, should we talk about the moon landings real quick? Uh, yeah, sure, can do. So this was in the late 60s, uh, supposedly in the early 60s, a well-known, I want to say astrophysicist, although that's probably not what he was, but I can say that term and most people won't even correct me on it because no one's going to look it up. But So th- some guy um, who, his opinion on this thing would have been important, and in the early 60s he said that it would be impossible for us to travel to the moon in the 60s. Uh, and in the 60s it happened. Um, America sent... Um, uh, people to the moon three astronauts and the idea or the conspiracy theory here is that they didn't actually go anywhere it was staged in some Hollywood uh, or maybe in the Arizona desert or some yeah, kind of movie studio the Arizona desert the, f- the, p- the positive one yeah um, and they did this to get the lead over Russia essentially it's sort of as a fuck you to the Russians because this was in the midst of the Cold War and I don't actually know was I don't think Kennedy was in I think Kennedy was dead by this point and it was uh, John Lyndon who had taken over but I'm not entirely sure on that I don't think it's even fucking relevant anyway but um yeah so this is the idea and that the, there's two main things that people always use to back up this theory uh, and that's that the flag doesn't wave um well the flag is waving and in reality a flag on the moon wouldn't wave and I like you can look this up yourself it's a stationary flag nasa sent the stationary flag up it's got wires in the middle to keep it looking like it's floating because nasa actually have the intelligence and the foresight to realize (laughs) that a flag wouldn't fucking wave on the moon so that's what they did and um the other theory was that there's some rock with a c written on it and a lot of people think that they wrote that as part of the prop on the sound stage and they forgot to, but in actual fact, that the uh, the hairline or the the C shape is a hairline that was left on before the photos were developed, and the actual original photos show that there is no C written on the rock. So it was just a, a piece of hair that got lost in the thing, yep. and that's really all I know. Like what I said earlier about the bridge between the gap from the casual person and the astrophysicist about not knowing terminology and not knowing what it would really take to get to the moon. That's really all I can say. 
because I don't I honestly don't know that much mm. about it but um, I mean any anyone that was anyone that's watched the Big Bang Theory will know that and well you might you might not know that it is actually a fact but it you know there is they did put a essentially a reflective panel on the moon when they went up there because I, I obviously strongly believe that well uh, I think it's, it's they've got you've got your fruit proof in the fact that there's a essentially a mirror on the moon and yeah. you can fire a laser at it at time how long it takes to travel back and work out that yep it's it's on the moon yeah and there you and have it like, yep there you go that wouldn't happen otherwise so. yep <laughs> also there, it's quite easy to google the fact that recent pictures from the probe that we tried to find the name of but couldn't yeah um <laughs> Pass by the moon, and you can see the pictures of the, uh, the what was it? The the flag, yeah, the flag. I, I don't know how I've managed to forget the word for flag. Um, <laughs> that wavy sign thing. Yeah. What's that called? That what that wavy picture pole thing. Um, you can see it's still standing, and there's the shadow from the sun on the floor, the, off the ground of the moon floor, ground. I will say I'll I'll assume the role of the theorist in this point, and I'll say. They're not very clear pictures. They're very you could easily misattribute them to rocks or a big rock next to a little rock. But I th I think that with a lot of conspiracy theorists who who come up with this sort of rebuttal, yeah. it's the want to believe more than the want to It's it's like it's like selective ignorance. They choose they they've chosen their path almost. Yeah. And uh, they they that's their choice and they're going to stick with their Guns, no matter what, slightly skewed and slightly moronic yeah. uh, theories they have to come up with. And I think that term selective ignorance is pretty perfect. Um, my cousin, I remember when I was about maybe 12 or 13, um, my, me and my cousin were watching Mythbusters and they were talking about going to the moon um, and whether or not it was staged. And my cousin is like one of the funniest people I know and he's not immediately witty he's sort of mm. more wacky like he comes up with very strange jokes that his delivery just makes them funny and I'm actually going to try and get him as a guest on the podcast sometime but he uh we were watching it and my cousin just shouted out like they always say that Neil Armstrong was the first man on the moon and I'm fine with that but what about the fucking cameraman <laughs> <And it's> just, <laughs> I, I just I laughed so much because that's basically the rationale of a conspiracy theorist like yeah. it's just that like yeah what about the cameraman he was standing there that whole time it's fucking bullshit like how is no one else seeing this <laughs> I thought it was so funny oh god but um yeah so that's our take on the moon landings I guess yep. um I will say that, like, in all honesty, it's entirely possible that we didn't go to the moon because, I mean, I don't have the knowledge or even the capabilities to understand what it would take, so I can't definitively say that we didn't go um, or that we did go, but it's my belief that we went, and I think there is sufficient evidence to point it out, especially that laser thing and the fact that you can see images that definitely look an awful lot like a flag and a... Mm -hmm. uh, a what you call it thing now i've forgotten the word for something the uh the toy car that they left on the moon uh lunar rover that's the one <laughs> yep that sounds about right yeah the lego rover i mean what yeah. yep <laughs> so um i guess we couldn't did go you want to talk about the fingerprints of gods of the gods oh shit i completely quickly. forgot about that yeah this yeah um there's a guy who i don't know would you even put this under conspiracy because it's conspiracy theory um, I'm not. I'm not sure it's a conspiracy theory at all. It's not essentially uh, a crime, really. No, but it's it's. It, I I think we can f fill it in with the conspiracy and the theories and the. Yeah, I think because so. it is it is a theory. It's out there. it's yeah, it's, out, it's there out there enough to associate itself with the same. And if if not if not a conspiracy theory alone, then I can. I'm sure that it has influenced several conspiracy theories oh yeah definitely mm. uh, so this is a guy by the name of graham hancock who is an english i believe he's actually a journalist as well as a writer um mm. and he came up with this idea that well he believes that throughout history there have been many different civilizations that we're not really sure of that we don't know a lot about and they were they sort of broke down and then built back up to be the civilizations that we know of uh, such as the Aztecs, the Maya, and the Egyptians and stuff. But what he he 
would you say hypothesized or theorized? I guess it's a hypothesis because it plays off the pole shift hypothesis, yeah. which is the idea that um, the the South Pole was way further away from Antarctica than it is today at one point, and they shifted so that there was this huge civilization based in Antarctica. Uh, and after the poles shifted, Antarctica... How does it even work? It moved further away. So it was a it was a massive to... it was a massive um, um, basically displacement of the Earth's crust essentially. Um, yeah, I can't, I can't remember how much how far it said, but I think it was, I think it was something like it was it was thirty degrees away from where the pole is now, or something like that. Yeah, um, it's, all this stuff is so technical that I'm not so good yeah. at you know um keeping the information intact but essentially what he believed was that there around what would it be it's something like 12,000 years ago yeah, i think it, yeah um, i think it was like 10,000 bc or something like that. yeah i think that's what it was um he believes that there was a huge civilization based in antarctica and after a while their civilization essentially broke down for reasons that i can't exactly fully uh, comprehend but it's to do with pole shifting and stuff, and they sort of spread out to other cultures and formed what we know as the the Aztecs and the Egyptians and the, like the people who built the pyramids and all of this stuff. And I, it's it's sort of con, I don't know if I'd put it under under conspiracy, but it's this idea that you know there's a huge sort of blind spot in our history that we don't know about because we perceive it to be different than what it was. But I don't know. He's I mean. It, this theory has been sort of taken apart in a lot of places, but I, I I did read that the BBC did a documentary about it, and they sort of picked it apart piece by piece. And Graham Hancock actually successfully sued them for defamation um, or something. Like that. Was it? Yeah, something like yeah. that. Yeah, they 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 wrongly interpreted his idea, or or they wrongly. Um, they wrongly alluded to it being insane or something yeah. like that. He like he won. Like he came out of that case with the with the victory. So yeah, I mean, it's, uh, it is a it is a it is a, it, is a, it was a, written as a piece of non-fiction, but it you know it is a it is almost a a theory that has been picked up by others, not necessarily Graham Hancock himself, yeah. who wrote the original novel. Oh. And he he actually has several books published, and like a lot of people do hold him in pretty high esteem. Like he's, yeah. I mean, he's not he's not cool with everybody, um, in in that field of you know um what like science and history and and all of these things. But um, he definitely does get a lot of sort of positive press as much as he gets negative press, I'd say, um, which is quite interesting. Yeah, um, just going back to you speaking, you you touched briefly on the missing period of uh, our history. Yeah, actually brings me on to um, another thing I want to speak about the uh, the phantom time hypothesis hypotheses. This is actually our our house band. We are El De Niro Jack and the Phantom Time Hypotheses. I thought we were the Polar Vortex. Yeah, no, the Polar Vortex is when we branch off. Like we get a little oh, bit nice. empty. We don't okay. need the band anymore. We're gonna make uh, some electronic beats. And oh, nice. Hashtags and stuff. Two guys in a MacBook. Nice. I like yeah, it. It's gonna be awesome. Um, <laughs> but basically, the Phantom Time Hypothesis is a cons- is actually we're back onto actual conspiracy theories here. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it was developed yeah. in the eighties and the nineties uh, by a German. A uh, German called Herbert Illig, and um, it's basically that a 300-year period between about 600 and 900 AD um, was essentially made up. Basically, yeah. it, it didn't exist, um, or else it was dated, dated, um, you know, dated or recorded incorrectly or smudged yeah. purposely by. Um, some leading, uh, uh, well, the, the, one of the theories is that um, Otto III um, wanted to be the uh, emperor of Rome, the Roman Empire at that time. So he uh, he had chroniclers across the across Europe, kind of um, smudge the dates by, you know, that little bit of three hundred years. <laughs> it's, it's quite interesting to think that there there was there is this idea that there is a missing part of. European history, yeah, um, especially about three hundred years, and a lot of people have attributed it to uh, the change from the Gregor- uh, the Julian to Gregorian calendar. Or was it um, the other way around? 
It was Julian to Gregorian, I think. Is that what it was? Because I think yeah, we're using the Gregorian calendar now. Pope Gregory, isn't that the... That's yeah. The, yeah, yeah, the astronomers and... Hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah. The, the thing about this theory that, like, in all honesty, I said earlier, like, we haven't really done a deep dive on this type of thing, and, and I only heard about this, like, last night because we were talking about our notes and stuff. Mm. And I looked it up, and the Wikipedia is very... Um, brief. Yeah, it's very brief. There's not a whole lot of information in there. And one thing that sort of stands in the way of this for me, like, I mean, it says that one of the arguments against it is that ancient astronomy um, don't agree with it because of the... We can use astronomy to predict, um, like, the patterns and the planets in the future and when Jupiter will appear and things like that. And all of that is in perfect sync with the idea of phantom time not being the case. Yeah. But that doesn't really bother me because I don't understand that anyway, so I can look past it. Even though it's stupid to do that, I'm willing to do it for the sake of trying mm. to understand the conspiracy. You know what Selective I mean? ignorance. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, <laughs> so I'm trying to... Um, Get in the mindset of the person that would believe it. Yeah, exactly. Um, I just, I just wanted to bring it up essentially because I think it's a really interesting concept. That I mean, we haven't been properly chron. Well, I say we haven't been properly chronicling time, but there is a very the further back you go, obviously, the less secure our knowledge becomes. And going, if if I was to say to you, how do we know that? people used when people started using certain tools like when you know when how do they know when the bronze age was fully you know in the iron age and things like that i understand about carbon dating but before that how was they were finding things you know in some sort in, in in when they were digging for various things before carbon dating really came about how were they yeah, placing they... them in a time yeah, how did they attribute it to, you know, such and such a period? And how yeah. did they... Yeah, it's sort of like... Um, I'm looking for a really good way of putting this. I don't think I can, but it's sort of like, how did they... Oh, man, there's a really good metaphor in here. Hold on, let me just think about it. I'm trying to think about, like, say, a skeleton of the human body yeah. and how it's built up of certain bones and stuff. How did the people in the past know where to put these bones to create mm. the time that we have now? Does that make sense? I just came yeah. up with it. It's very different. I, th I, think, I, think I, I think I understand what you mean. It's like the, the people that first found dinosaurs had to put together all the bones and yeah, yeah, yeah. figure out where they all went. And if the, we use time, the, you know, history is... The dinosaur is a metaphor for history and kind of putting together, placing together history. And I understand now with carbon dating, you can track back and take things, to, I think it's to tens of years, it can be really ridiculously accurate. Yeah. Um, but I mean, even then, it's how, how do we know we're doing that right? Yeah, I, I know. Und I, understand, I understand about the breakdown of carbon and half-lives of elements and stuff like that. I say I understand. I'm aware that that's a thing. <laughs> um, I did I'm familiar with those I did terms. A level, I did A-level physics and I failed. Um, oh, dear. <laughs> and chemistry. That was awful. I will actually add as well to that that I failed science at pretty much every opportunity mm. in school. And I, I think this is why something like this... I mean, if there's any truly... Um, if there's any people out there who studied that level of science or that mm. level of carbon dating or, or anything to do with history and stuff, like feel free to laugh at us here. Yeah, but in understand retrospect, we are we are not the best people to be talking about. No, but all this. we're doing is opening a doorway for you to study this for yourself. Mm. We're we're just here to talk and you know play devil's advocate yeah, and just throw have out a... some throw out some hypotheses that are poorly thought through. Yeah, exactly, and, and I think it's important that we say that too because I don't want to. Mm. I don't want to come across as though I am an all-knowing. Yeah, being. all-knowing being as uh, you know, the lizard people that we uh, that came from the skies. Which is another really good conspiracy theory that I yeah. firmly believe in. <laughs> <laughs> but, Speaking of aliens, shall we move on to? Probably, all, I, I don't know if you'd say it's the most famous conspiracy theory of all time. It's but, one of the most uh, popular, I'd say. Roswell and Area 51. Yeah, I think if you could... Maybe if you could quantify the effect that this idea has had on society, even in the most basic form. Like, you mentioned Men in Black earlier. Mm, yeah. Like, you know, there are so many movies about aliens and things that... I, I Like, I think, you know, the idea of aliens is, without a doubt, one of the most popular... Uh, mm. I, I guess 
taught. I, I don't even think yeah. conspiracy theories covers it, but just it's it's a very very popular idea that uh, that aliens have walked among us and that they've. Yeah. So the Roswell um, base is. This is a stupid question, but Roswell is Area Fifty One, right? They're the same. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, I knew that. I just had to double check before I went and gone. So like, it's a military base that America they used to develop secret weapons and they used to, you know, uh, test things. And it's it's kept off limits for that exact reason. It's where the stealth planes were developed. It's where they're probably developing something even better than that now. Although they are really intent on wasting billions of dollars on tanks that they're never going to use, but. Yeah, so they're coming up with all this crazy technology and stuff, and it's the secrecy that surrounds it that lends credence to this idea that there is a possible alien experimentation or examination or even understanding going on yeah. in there, that they know something mm. that we don't about aliens. Yep. Yeah, I mean, uh, it's, it's so deeply now ingrained in our pop culture and stuff like that. It's, you know, it, a lot of people won't know the... almost the... the I was going to say heritage, but you know, it was it was it was Area Fifty One was a, is a big Air Force base run by the CIA, I think, or it might be might might just be the American government in general, but that that was reportedly and especially with the Roswell incident, working with or on alien life. Yeah, and uh, recently there was some guy who has um, some sort of political standing in canada I, I can't remember his official title um and i saw this on youtube about a year ago so this is why my information on it is fuzzy but he was at some kind of um not a press conference more like a parliament meeting at a table surrounded by other government officials and he was saying that we have made contact with two different species of aliens hmm. did you ever hear of that story no i haven't it's uh I mean, I said this to my friend who is also fascinated by the paranormal, and this is the type of story that he would usually go, oh, I need to look this up, but his reply was, yeah, that's bullshit. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so I, I think that that's just what it is. But um, the idea that we've made contact with aliens is something that a lot of people genuinely believe, and even the idea that we're being watched by aliens and stuff. Um, I, the idea that aliens have infiltrated our government. and mm-hmm. what What do you actually believe about aliens? Uh, I'd like, you know, going back to the what's more scary, us being alone or us not yeah. in the universe, I I don't think us being, you know, one of many, as it were, is a scary thing. Um, I mean, sure, definitely if, if they can manage, uh, you know, light speed travel and yeah, travel to interstellar, and... interstellar travel, that's definitely something that's amazing and I think I'd like to think that if they were that at that level they would be beyond mo- you know travelling hell bent on destruction th- hell bent on destruction yeah, I th- yeah. I th- I'd like to think that they'd be beyond that and I mean I'm just reading about the um, the Canadian who's the Canadian former's defence minister really yeah who's, who is quoted as saying uh, aliens would give us more technology if we stopped wars yeah, yeah, yeah. That's exactly um, it. Yes. Thank you for looking yeah. that up because so I, 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 I wanted, to, I wanted to know myself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But that's that's a that's a kind of that's a kind of crazy thing. I mean, you could just say that his mind he, he's not exactly a sprightly bloke. He's no. not exactly young, but you know, there, there is there is definitely a possibility, and I wouldn't put it. I, I this is this is me putting my little tinfoil hat on now. Mm-hmm. Um, I wouldn't put it past the U.S. government intercepting almost a, a an, an alien craft that crashed say at Roswell yeah and instead of trying to help it imprisoning it and yeah. you know I, I I I don't see it as a natural human instinct to care for another not that we should, won't care for another life force but we are so used to being the apex predator yeah so Even... used to being king of the food chain if we were to see, like, let's say, for example, you're walking down the street, you see a mm. dog with a broken leg or something, you're going to help yep. the dog. Yeah. But if you're traveling in the ocean by speedboat and you see a shark with his fin cut, you're going to fucking leave him there and you're going to yeah. hope he dies. Like, that's mm. just the way that it is. We don't like being yeah. threatened. The reason we're not threatened by dogs, obviously, is because they're domesticated and they love yeah. us. And, yeah. Um, I, 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 it's... You know what? I have this... I don't know if this is outlandish, but I actually think this is... 
I have this belief, right, that human beings are actually not the dominant species on this planet. The dominant species is bacteria and viruses. And that's seen in, like, that's evidenced by the fact that we're essentially, we are walking hosts for viruses. Yeah. That is pretty much what life is, is that you're a host for a virus. And your job, like, to do with evolution genetically and stuff is to come up with new ways to um, flush out these viruses. And that's why people try and find the best partner available to them is so that their genes can form a child capable of beating more viruses and and, and that's Mm. essentially what life is and i think that if aliens were to arrive it would be the exact same scenario as it was in war of the worlds where the bacteria just killed the aliens Mm. because they wouldn't be familiar with our atmosphere they wouldn't know anything about our environment and what diseases or even like something as simple as the common cold could do to them and i that's just i've always i've always believed that and i don't believe it for some Mm. kind of safety net i believe it because i genuinely think bacteria is the dominant species on this planet i I think we're i think we're uh, obviously as because it's difficult it's difficult to assume that any other carbon-based life form that is intelligent enough to travel you know light years and stuff is would be kind of similar to us yeah. Um it's it's difficult to believe in another or to think about and create another type of life form that can have such a massive intelligence. Yeah. Um you know, I mean they might it, it, you know they might they wouldn't they might not be affected by our bacteria and stuff like that, you know. Another point as well to note is that um and now I talk about this an awful lot on my channel, so people, a lot of people are just going to groan and roll their eyes here. But you know the idea of the singularity where we're eventually going to become a machine? Yep. Uh, so by, Ray Kurzweil has predicted that by the year 2029, machines are kind of going to be branching into an area where they will have their own rights. Um, and essentially what's going to happen at some point in our future, maybe over the next 100 years or so, is that we're going to create an AI. And this AI is going to be, uh, like, not, obviously, artificial intelligence. It's going to yeah. walk amongst us. And we're, for the first time ever, we're going to share the planet with another species yeah. because this will be something that's almost alien to us. Yeah. Because they will be able to form their own thoughts, but they're not human. And mm. there's, I think, right, if, if you consider that the universe was formed... Uh, 15 billion years ago at its latest mm. supposed date yep. um, and I'm sure you've heard that statistic that the Tyrannosaurus Rex and the the distance of time between the, it's not the Brontosaurus it's a different dinosaur but it's a famous dinosaur and I should know this as well but the distance of time between that dinosaur and the Tyrannosaurus Rex is greater than the distance of time between the Tyrannosaurus Rex and us. Yeah, yeah. So if you consider that the Industrial Revolution was in the late 19th century, mm. um, and since then, in the space of 200 years, we have gone from pretty much nothing to fucking everything. Mm-hmm. Like yep. We rule this fucking... Like, we have just capabilities that weren't even fathomable, say like 50 years ago even fucking i remember in the 90s imagining what it would be like to have a phone that you could do more than just call someone on Mm. so if you think how far we are now imagine how far we're going to be in 100 years and such and such and such right but Mm. if the universe was created 15 billion years ago which it was on another planet they may have had their industrial revolution a lot quicker than we did and Mm in that space of time where we've been developing things like the arts and everything up to um, and including the industrial revolution they could have had their own revolution Mm -hmm. and they could be so much more advanced than us that they could have actually visited us at a time when humans didn't even exist and they Mm -hmm. could have passed by our planet looked at it and gone (laughs) fuck all there and then just fucked off back to alien land I mean making making the let's make the assumption that the uh, that the alien life forms uh, or other alien life forms that are out there are essentially humans, but they st- and they started from the same genesis as humans, except for us, Earth is our perfect environment. Yeah, environment, yeah. yeah. We our couldn't perfect really, environment. we wouldn't grow into this what we are now. No, in yeah. any other type of environment. So say there was a slightly different uh, planet. Similar, similar. Let's 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 just say that it's similar to Earth, except maybe the air is slightly more oxygen rich. It's maybe slightly, you know, closer to the sun. Maybe it's slightly warmer. Yeah. Um. You know, and certain certain things like that, and maybe say there's slightly less gravity, or might maybe slightly more. That will every every small tiny little thing 
from the beginning of time and from the beginning of this this um, I've got to say human mark two um, evolution on a different planet in a different reaches of the solar system. You know they've they, they've they've adapted and evolved like we have to yeah. where we are now. Yeah, and they would have evolved in different ways, and it, you know just just as a hypothesis, it that could be. You know how how it's how it's worked. We could have grown up simultaneously, yeah. or you know their, theirs could have laid way to conditions that allowed them to evolve more rapidly. Yeah. Um, and I think I think that's quite that's quite an interesting idea, especially if we consider that they'd be, you know, from the same, you know, from the same uh, gene pool almost, yeah. as it were, I, I having the same beginnings. It's fair to say though that that is a possibility. Mm. Like, which is uh, that's fascinating to me. The idea, the idea that we're a one-off in this re- uh, unfathomable, unfathomable size of the atmosphere, uh, atmosphere, um, you know, the, the universe. Yeah, that thing. Um, the idea, the idea that we're a one-off planet house. Yeah, put the prob- <laughs> the probability of us being a one-off is surely outnumbered by, uh, you know. Just the ridiculous amount that's out there. Yeah, and that that thing that I said about the idea, like I, I mean, I talked for a long time. I can't even remember what I said. I could have been nonsense. But the idea that if they developed at a timeline while we were still, you know, from dinosaur to human, mm, essentially yeah. nothing. If they did develop like that, that's sort of the main counter argument to Fermi's paradox, which is the notion that if we are here in this galaxy that houses so many other planets and the likelihood of um, intelligent extraterrestrial life is so mm. great where is everybody and it mm. could just be as simple as well they're all around us they just didn't fucking care about us before and they don't yeah. care about us now which is yeah. entirely plausible I think mm. I mean by no stretch of the imagination I, well I'm saying this without comparison to any other real uh, contenders in terms of species, but it, we're not, you know, a slouch in terms of our evolution, evolutionary pace, really, especially in uh, in recent years for just a uh, revolution instead of evolution, in terms of revolution of equipment, technologies, and stuff like that. I mean, definitely no slouch in regards to that. Yeah, yeah. But we're not, we're not fucking around. We know. What we're no, doing. yeah. We know what we're doing. No, there's, there's, there's definitely. I think there's definitely a possibility that we're not alone in the uh, in the the big old universe. May I don't even think we're alone on this fucking planet. Did you hear what the sea people are up to lately? Oh, the sea people! I hear they've been recruiting again. Here, if we're so good at everything, why have we not conquered the sea people? Yeah, I think that's a that I think is... that's a conspiracy theory in itself. Hmm. I mean, the sea people are seriously dangerous, especially with global warming coming up. And we've spoken about this before, that the sea people do get more agitated and more aggressive when they're hot. Yeah, exactly. Um, And with global warmings and with the oceans rising, flooding the lands of boiling hot liquids, and just the sea people overrunning us, it's, it's a terrifying thought, really. It is. And, you know, I mean, yeah, we have Justin Timberlake... That, that is an actual thing like mm. he can definitely save us from them but yeah i don't know i think we need to stop global warming in order to prevent the rise of the sea people it's yeah i don't I know mean, why more people don't care let's really. not forget that the sea people do have their agents uh you know their agents their pets as it were in the specific locations you know strategically placed they've already got the loch ness monster and he's been there for a a while up in scotland plotting his uh his nefarious, yeah. nefarious doings for when the glaciers melt and he can, they can ride him into battle. Yeah. Um. <laughs> you know what's incredible, right? Is that I've been to Loch Ness, yeah. and it's so fu- like. I, I mean, I, I said a billion times I love Scotland, but it's not mm. a fucking glamorous place. No. It's not a place where a fucking monster could just exist beneath there without mm. you fucking knowing about it. It's a lake, no, yeah. and it's a very small yeah. lake. Yeah. yeah. Like, in comparison to all the other... Like, it's just... I That branch of cryptozoology that holds on to mm. this notion based on a fucking fake photograph. That original yep. photograph was made by a guy who actually made it to get back at the Daily Mail. Yep. And it's just, this is you're believing in nonsense just because you want to. I think I think my favourite thing about um, the whole lot nice isn't isn't any of the, isn't any of like the the searches that have gone on for it, the photographs that have come out, um, any of that. It's the fact that I th- I'm not sure if it's still on, 
but there was a time a year or two ago, maybe three, um, that there wa there was a website set up that live streamed a video from a cam from a very small camera on a cottage near Loch Ness of just Loch Ness, <laughs> and you could watch this twenty four hour live stream. Jeez. You could watch the waves breaking. You could watch the trees in the background shake. But fuck off, were you going to see anything but that? <laughs> I will say that's actually sometimes that's so relaxing just watching it. Mm. Like, you ever see those uh, websites that have like a live stream of Times Square? Yeah. And you just watch it. Like, have you ever just sat mm. there and just zoned out and watched it? Yeah. It's, it's like a ne it's like next level people watching. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it's like what the NSA do every day. <laughs> Which is another thing that actually lends credence to the whole NWO thing is the fact that the NSA are a very real thing. The NSA is 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 quite is quite terrifying. It is, and I don't understand the apathy towards it. It's like it's a serious. The extent to which they are spying on you is serious. Mm. It's infringing on your rights. Yep. It's you. You can't just retreat into your little hole and say, "Well, I've got nothing to hide. It doesn't bother me." Because mm. that's not the fucking point. <laughs> You know it's, I mean? it's not the it's not yeah it's it's not the point. People are saying, "Well, I've got nothing to hide." You don't have to have something to hide to have basic privacy. Yeah, exactly. Um, you know, you you're not gonna if if someone comes around and goes, "I'm gonna I'm gonna have a look around your bedroom." Yeah. You'll go, "No," and they'll and they'll go, "Why? Have you got something to hide?" No, but that's not the point. Besides, yeah. everybody has something to hide, and if anyone yeah. says, "Right, I'm not afraid of the NSA. I've got nothing to hide," all you've say is. Show me your internet history. Oh Jesus! Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that's a how, terrifying thought. How how much money would it take you? How much money would it take for someone to give you to read your internet history out to your family? To my family? Yeah. <sighs> um, quite a lot. Enough money so that you could move to a place where you'd never have to speak to them again, presumably. Essentially, yeah. Yeah. That um. That's yeah. That's that's definitely a, a special something. It's not even, it's not even the, um, you know, the the multitude of of pictures of uh, Barack Obama in sexy poses <laughs> that I'm worried about. It's the um, or the sea creatures or anything. Yeah, or the, or the or the the multiple essays that I've written on the sea people. Yeah. It's it's more of just the some of the really morbid things that I've looked at due to Reddit or just. Just some plain weird stuff that would take way too long to explain. Yeah, I agree. It's mm. yeah, and I, it's it's not even like you know you, you don't have anything to hide in the sense that you're not doing in, anything inherently wrong. It's just very difficult to explain morbid curiosity sometimes. Yep. <laughs> yeah, where it's like, so why were you looking at this? Oh, I just wanted to. T I just. I yeah. just. I just wanted to. I just wanted to know what it looked like when a man got beheaded. Um, <laughs> yeah. I, that's a one in a lifetime thing. I'm never going to look at that again. Yeah, just wanted to see what it's like. I think we've deviated sufficiently from the topic. I don't think I can call this conspiracy <laughs> theories because this is. I don't think it's been conspiracy theories for quite a while now. No, I, don't think <laughs> I think what what would be a good title for this? Conspiracy theories, aliens, and more. Yeah, maybe. But the more is a big bracket. Um, maybe we should just call it reading out our internet history. <laughs> oh, good God. No, um, I, I guess conspiracy theories, aliens, and cryptoids or something. Cryptozoology. Yeah, it's a weird one. This has been yep. a weird episode. This has been an odd episode. I can only imagine the next one will be equally as odd. I think I already know what we're going to talk about for yeah, the next Yeah, I one. think so. I think it'll be a good branch from this one. Mm -hmm. I actually think so far... It's nice how each episode has sort of segued into itself. Like, yep. hopefully, people are enjoying it. If you are enjoying yeah. it, if you're this far into the video, leave some kind of comment. What? Let's come about up with the it. sea people. Uh, yeah. Beware the sea people. Beware, beware the sea people. Leave us the reason that you're terrified of the sea people. I don't yeah, know. Yeah, do leave us leave <laughs> us the reason, right? Let's say this. Don't right? don't include the fact. Don't include the word sea people though. Yeah, because then explain will know. why you're scared. Yeah. Say yeah yeah. yeah. And and yeah, just say you're scared because, but don't yeah. say like you don't even have to say I'm scared because just come up with something random and mm. you know. We'll re I, I really loved at the end of the last one. I was like, you you said, uh, beware of the sea people. You know, they'll get you as if it's just <laughs> a fucking inevitability. <laughs> like you know, it is. It really is. There's nothing you can do about it. Like they're coming for you, and that's just that. You I know? think I think I might have to start writing a uh, 
a thesis on the sea people and get this on Wikipedia. Yeah. Get this properly done up. I think I might have to start writing a fucking will before they come to me. <laughs> but uh, I think we'll end it here. Um, mm-hmm. Thank you guys very much for listening. Hopefully you enjoyed it. Thanks, Jack, for coming yep. on. Cheers. It's been an awesome guest so far. I'm sure everyone in the comment section agrees. Cheers. And, uh, yeah, that's that. We'll uh, we'll leave it there. I've been Alden Nero. He's been Jack. Fuck this. <laughs>